Hey, this is Vaughan at West Goat Bell Pottery in uh, La Have, Nova Scotia. Um, this is the South Shore um, on the eastern tip of Canada. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how to throw an assortment of different size balls from one pound, one and a half pound, and three pounds of clay uh, using B-Mix, which is Laguna Clay Company on a very old uh, Brent CXC wheel. Um, so it has a little noise to it, uh, but this wheel is going on 30, 1988, I think I bought it, somewhere around there. So it's uh, 20, 32 years old. Um, it never broken down, it's a great wheel. It's got a lot of power, um, but it, being so old, it's got a little noise to it at the moment, but let's see whether it works. I'm going to set you up here so you can see really well close to the wheel without splashing my iPad. I hope. I think that's good. You should be able to see that. I'll try not to splash my iPad. If it goes off the screen, maybe I'll have to pull it back a bit. Anyway. Let's get some little plasti bats here. I don't like these as much as the other ones because I have to figure out how to get them on the pins, but there you go, it's not that hard. There you go, let's see whether that's too noisy. All right, so let's go with a one pound ball of clay first. There you go, just round it off a little bit. I use the duct tape on my little finger when I'm throwing because I actually will wear my skin out on that little section. So that's what that white thing is there. So centering is applying pressure left and top as hard as you can. And you've moved the clay around. If it doesn't move, you're not pressing hard enough. Moving up, down till you can get it into center. I have some videos on learning how to throw. Maybe I'll post a link to one of those with this video for those who are beginners. Okay. Let's see how big we can get this for one pound of clay. Leave about half a centimeter or so at the bottom. I'm using this wheel because I use this one for white clay and my uh, I have a Shimpo Whisper next to it and I have a Shimpo Light the other side of it which are quieter wheels but I use those for other colors of clay so I keep one wheel for each color of clay that way I'm not wiping my wheels down all the time so when I'm pushing my fingertips together I'm keeping that speed even when I get to the rim, touch it down with your fingertip to compress the rim a little bit. So my fingers are really doing that, tips together. You can see where the clay comes off and you can see the pink of my fingers there. So that shows you where I was touching the wheel, the clay. Now dribble the rim, wire on the rim so it goes down the inside and the outside. Now pushing my fingers in deep on the outside, I push my fingertips together again. Come right to the top, speed is even, so I'm not speeding up or slowing down. Let go when you get to the top just by touching the rim to compress down and touch. That's just a, because the clay is being stretched, is to compress it a little bit when you touch the rim like that. And I'm gonna do that one more time. This is about as big as I can get from this size of clay. But this time I'm pressing out a little bit more so that the clay gets wider. And now touch the rim again. Get the water out. I'm gonna paint these with black crows all over them so I want the inside to be fairly smooth. Use the metal ribs to get rid of all the water. So 
There's a lot of water on the piece. I'm going to skirt that up just a bit. Now I'm going to put my fingers on the inside and press towards the rib. And this will be the final widening of the ball. So, that is one pound of clay. These bats are 12 inch bats, so you have an idea of how big the piece is. It's a good idea when you're throwing to clean your wheel up a little bit, saves cleaning later on. And then I like to just nick it out a little bit. Flare it just at the top. Trumpet shape almost. This is my rem tool, which I've got, I haven't wet it, so I'm going to put that in there and do, use it for another piece afterwards to compress the rim. But anyway, I think you can use, this is very smooth clay, so I don't need to use a leather on the rim. That's the profile. Put another back. And now we'll go to one and a half pounds of clay. So it's just 50% bigger than the last one. Round it a bit before you start it spinning. Centering. My left hand is sliding right on the surface of the bat. So I have to keep water underneath it so it doesn't burn. And you can see because that clean area is where my hand's touching. So squash it down if you want, just to make sure it's nice and centered, then push in again. If the clay's in good shape, you can pretty much just put it right into center. And this clay feels perfect. Fingers down again. Notice how my hands are touching each other so that my left and right hand are actually working as one, leaving half a centimeter or so at the bottom, at least half a centimeter. I don't leave a full centimeter for sure, because I like to trim a hollow area underneath my foot. Push in deep with the outside fingers and pull up. Dribble water right on the rim so it goes inside and outside. Push in deep with the outside fingers and pull up. When you get to the rim, put some pressure down to compress the rim. Water right on the rim edge so it goes inside and outside. Push in deep at the bottom to grab some thickness of clay above your fingers. And then pull it all the way to the top so the speed stays constant and your fingertip pressure is constant too. Put a little pressure on the rim. Get some more water. Dribble it right on the rim. The wheel's going slower now because the piece is getting bigger. Now this time more pressure on with the inside fingers so it pushes out. All 
right? Pressure on the rim to compress. So one and a half pounds of clay. All right. This is the, I think what's November 15th today, 2020. So I hope everybody's staying healthy. We now have uh, 20 cases of COVID in Nova Scotia, which is the most we've had since the spring. Most of the summer we had zero. Okay, so I'm basically taking the water off the surface on the outside. And I can do the same on the inside with the rib. Just put a little back pressure on from the outside. Not much water on the inside. And then just at the top, Pull it out just a tiny bit. There's no water on the inside, so I've got to be gentle here because I don't want it to stick to my fingers too much. So I'm just giving it that trumpet shape. And then use the sponge to smooth out the inside. the water off the surface, clean the bat up. Cleaning the bat up is great because then you don't dribble water all over your studio floor as you carry it around because the water would just run off the edge. There you go. So let's lift this one off. This is one and a half pounds of clay. You got a similar profile. It's hard to see in that picture, I know, but there you go. And then we're moving to three pounds of clay. This bat judders a little bit, so we'll see how I get on. All right off the bottom a little bit that way I don't trap any air in there all righty so a lot more to center this is double the weight of the last ball of clay three pounds of clay. Now the, the bat isn't juddering too much. I felt it move a little bit then. You can hear it knocking a touch. But it's not enough to irritate me. Okay, we're nice and centered. When the bat wobbles like that, you just don't want to let go quickly because uh, it'll be, it'll make the bat go off a little bit. Fingertips to the center. Now I'm going to leave a slightly thicker base, about a centimeter because the ball is bigger. So it'll have a bigger foot. So now we've probably got to about a centimeter almost of thickness on the bottom. I like to go, trim out a little hollow area under the, between the, the edge of the foot. That way I can glaze the middle area. Although sometimes I find these ones on stilts. Okay, dig deep on the outside. It's wet and I think I can get to the top without it getting too dry. Because I've got to chase the wet spot all the way up.
water right on the rim. Dig deep on the outside. When you feel a lump above your fingers, you can start pressure and pulling your fingers up. So once again, dribble water right on the edge so it'll dribble inside and outside all the way down. There's a whole sponge full of water. Dig your fingers deep. You feel for a little lump above your fingers and then start pulling up. Slow the wheel down because it's getting big. Gonna have to move the camera in a sec because it's gonna go off the camera, I think. There you go, just about off the camera, so let's move the camera a touch. Get the water off my fingers before I touch the iPad. There we go. So now I'm going to use the rib. So I'm basically pulling the water off the outer edge on the outside of the piece. Where I'm putting pressure on with my inside fingers. There you go. I'm going to try that one more time and widen it because it was a fairly successful expansion there. So sometimes you can feel it just kind of give a little bit and then you know you've gone far enough. Yeah, my cat's sneezing. I've been told to call my cat Pluebel instead of Poobel because uh, it means most beautiful. We found her in a dumpster, which is why I called her Poobel. Okay. Which is why she's always sneezed ever since I got her because she had a rough start. It was a toxic waste dump where we found her. But she's uh, 10 years old now, so she's done pretty well considering she grew up in a, a super fun site in New York State. Mind you, she was only about 12 weeks when I found her, so she didn't have a long exposure there. Okay, so I'm now going to scrape the water off the inside, just using the rib. My fingers are just barely touching on the outside, but the ribs are right on the wall on the inside. Oops. Slippery ribs. Okay, now I'm just going to push out with the inside rib just to get that trumpet shape. So as you imagine, this piece is very thin. Now I paint the inside of these with crows, but sometimes if it's tall like this, it means I can do the outside as well. We have a family of crows that I feed every day. They're suspicious of me. They're not like the ones you see on the internet that will come right up to people. I fed them for 10 years, so you'd think they would like me. But the reason they're still here, I guess, is because they don't trust people. And that means they've never got themselves in trouble. 
There you go. This is that tool. My one of the guys who subscribes is called Freddy, and uh, he sent me this. So he, it's, he makes these tools, and they go just on there, just to kind of compress the rim. But like I said, this is a very smooth clay, so I don't need to do this with a because the clay is so fine already. It's B mix. All right. It's hard to know, but that one is huge compared to the first one. But um, let's see if I can move my coffee, put them next to each other. Not sure if you'll get a, a view of this one or not. But let's try turning the iPad. Oh, it's a bit difficult for you to see. But there's the two. That's the one and you no, know, it's the one pound ball with a three pound ball. And then the other one is over the other side. All right. <sighs> okay, so one pound, one and a half pounds, three pounds. Um, the smaller one, as you can see from the bat itself, I would say this one's about six to seven inches across and all that and this one which was the next size up looks to me to be about nine inches across and that was 50 percent bigger and this one is as wide as the bat so this one is 12 inches across um so uh so that's the difference you can get from one, one and a half, and three pounds of clay. Um, so that's 22 minutes, that's a long video. So um, uh, if you wanna see that the earlier videos, I'll put some links on hits and you can hit subscribe and, uh, and just uh, give me a shout if you want me to throw something in, in the next video. All right, I'm Vaughan Smith, westcobellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia. Thanks for joining me and stay safe.